I never believed in the paranormal, in werewolves or Bigfoot or anything like that. But now, now, I only know for certain I was attacked. I had been longing long for spring, longing long. It had been a cold and especially snowy winter. And now that it was here, now that spring was officially here, oh, there was still lots of snow on the ground, but, but now, now I could walk again. Ah, walk. I work at the university as a lab instructor, but I live on the other side of the park. It took me about 45 minutes to walk to work. And it was my time, me time, a time for reflection and, and for sorting out the various issues in my life. And so I left uber early. I tried to leave the house before 6 a.m. when the rest of the world was sleeping. The streets were empty of traffic and the park just waking up and in spring the birds filling the darkness with their morning song. But, but this morning was different. For starters, a, a cold fog had crept in overnight, so the air was damp and visibility limited. I could see ahead, maybe 50 feet or so, but that was it. Not that I was frightened or scared. I was walking along one of the trails through the park, so I wasn't in any danger from cars, and it was too early for cyclists, for bikes. So I strode along in spite of the chill and was completely engrossed in my thoughts. The fog had deadened all sound, but there was something, something in the back of my mind, something which hadn't fully exploded into my consciousness. Footsteps. Footsteps coming up from behind me. But not human footsteps. I stopped dead and listened. Yes, they were still there. Something was moving towards me in a stealthy manner. Something on... on... four feet like an animal. I listened more intently. Whatever it was made a distinctive scraping sound, the sound of something hard in contact with the asphalt trail. But what it was, I couldn't imagine. It, it was maybe a hundred yards behind me. It must be an animal of some kind. I started walking again, picking up the pace, my peaceful morning mood totally destroyed. I continued to hear the footsteps behind me. They seemed to be getting closer and closer. And then I suddenly realized the nature of the sound I was hearing. It was the sound of hooves. An image swept into my mind. An unwanted image, that of a being with cloven hoofs. The devil! I tried to walk even faster, and then I heard grunting? Grunting, which sounded pretty darn close. I turned again, staring into the swirling mist, and what was it that I could now see two pinpricks of yellow eyes eyes something was emerging from the fog something low to the ground but substantial about the size of a, a wolf no no this animal was huge far bigger than any dog or wolf it appeared to be jet black and had pointed ears a a large snout and, and two huge fangs, 
two huge gleaming fangs hanging out each side of its mouth. The beast, whatever it was, raised its large dark snout and snorted as it regarded me with its beady yellow eyes. I still had no idea what it was, what I was looking at, and then it charged. It did have hooves, hooves which raised sparks as they struck the asphalt path. Not that I stood there staring. I had never known such blind terror in my entire life. My first impulse was to get away. But get away where? I ran off the path and through the trees, trying to lose myself in the fog. When a thought flashed into my mind, chilling me to the core, what if the thing could see in the dark? Something loomed out of the darkness before me, a squat gray structure hewn out of rough concrete. The public washrooms. Were they open? It was way too early in the season, but this was my only chance. I could hear the thing, the, the monster, the, the werewolf, right behind me, crashing through the underbrush. It must have been huge, much larger than I thought, large enough to hurt me seriously, large enough to maybe kill me. I groped my way around to where the entrance door was. Please, God, please, 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 let it be open. I found the door and pushed. It swung open. I threw myself inside and slammed the door behind me before leaning on it to hold it shut, breathing so hard I was almost hyperventilating. <sighs> I was in total darkness, afraid to leave my post in order to grope for the lights. The interior of the old washroom was odorous, to put it mildly, but I preferred the safety of this dank, smelly cave to being outside with it. It. My breathing was just returning to normal when WHAM! Something hit the door so hard, it knocked it open a good two feet. Frantically, I, I pushed it back, only to have it, the thing, werewolf, whatever it was, throw itself against the door yet again, hitting it three feet off the ground. Obviously, the thing was charging the door, charging and leaping into the air, three or four feet off the ground. And... It seemed to be talking to me. Talking to me. I couldn't tell if it actually was talking, but if it was, it was in a foreign language. I couldn't make out specific words as they were drowned out by a series of grunts and squeals and the sound of racing hooves as the thing charged the door. I stifled the urge to scream. I didn't want to betray my presence. <laughs> what a laugh. As if the thing hadn't caught my scent. As if it couldn't smell me. I don't know how long the thing kept charging the door until it finally lost interest or, or just got tired. The attack probably lasted only ten minutes. But it felt like hours. Still... Eventually, it stopped. I just stood there in shock, inside my stinky refuge, hoping I hadn't pooped my pants. Even though the thing had stopped its assault, I was afraid to open the door, in case it was lurking out there, lurking out there, and waiting for me. Eventually, Light began to filter in through the dirty windows, and I could hear cars passing on the road outside, so I figured it was finally safe to go. Outside, 
I examined the washroom door, which seemed scoured with sharp dents and scratches. Had they been there before, or had they just been inflicted as the thing tried to get at me? I didn't tell anyone of my experience, outside of family, but one night at a hockey game, over a few adult beverages, I told my buddy about it, and he started to laugh. To laugh! That wasn't a werewolf. That was a wild boar. The Eurasian wild boar wasn't native to the area, but was introduced in the 70s and 80s as a new food animal. Of course, some got away and began to thrive in the wild. They are nocturnal and can grow up to 600 pounds, but despite their razor-like tusks, there were no local reports of them attacking humans. No local ones. Yet. Of course, pigs are omnivorous and will eat anything, my buddy said laughing. Perhaps this one caught a whiff of you and decided it was making... Don't say it, I said, before he could deliver the punchline. For you see, my last name is Bacon. The moral of the story? It's okay to go hog wild and pig crazy over bacon, ham, and eggs, but one should never be a boar. If this is your first visit to my channel, please consider subscribing. My name is Warren, and I write and tell original ghost stories and original horror stories featuring such cryptids as the night floaters, werewolves, and the black-eyed children. So again, please consider subscribing. Please help me to reach my goal of 2,500 subs in 2022. Till midnight. Cheers! Pictures used in today's video, courtesy of Pix here, that's PX here, while the music is The Dreadful, The Dread by the wonderful Kevin McLeod, patron of the internet. Oh well, it could have been a whole lot worse. At least the poor guy's last name wasn't Whoopi. <laughs> I put that one in as a cushion in case you didn't like the first joke.